Dobro jutro svima. Hello everyone. Um, prije svega, kao što znate, naš današnji info dan uh, će biti realiziran na engleskom jeziku. Uh, nadamo se da to neće biti većini od vas koji ste ovo jutro sa nama problem, s obzirom da ćete svakako, vjerovatno, neki od vas i učestvovati u samom uh, programu, tako da će engleski svakako biti vaš radni jezik. Mi ćemo danas um, imati uh, info sesiju u kojoj ćemo predstaviti dakle, program uh, EU Scheme for young professionals in BIH um, u okviru kojeg ćemo um, organizovati specifičan trening za mlade državne službenike koji uh, imaju od jedne do sedam godina iskustva na poslovima EU integracija um, kako bi jednostavno osnažili njihove kapacitete jer će oni biti ti koji će zapravo voditi Bosnu i Hercegovinu na putu ka Evropskoj uniji. Ovo je program koji financira Evropska unija, a implementira ga British Council. Uh, nažalost, danas uh, nije sa nama uh, gospodin Nikolas Bizel, usred tehničkih okolnosti, što je uh, specifičnost ovog novog normalnog, da tako kažemo, uh, dakle, šef uh, operacija uh, ispred delegacije Evropske unije u Bosni i Hercegovini, ali zato je danas sa nama uh, Larisa Halilović, direktorica uh, British Council, Tamara Bajkuša, koja je prošla kroz ovaj program i imam pravo iskustvo iz prve ruke um, i sigurno će vam biti zanimljivo što vam ona ima reći, kao i Claire Lawrence, uh, zamjenica direktora, uh, zapravo predstavnica uh, College of Europe iz Belgije, koji je zapravo naša partnerska uh, institucija u okviru ovog programa. Nakon njihovih izlaganja imat ćete priliku postaviti pitanja na četu, na bosanskom ili na engleskom, sve jedno. Um, I naknadno će i sam snimak ove sesije biti dostupan na web stranici kako biste ga mogli ponovo pregledati, a već od danas na web stranici EU4, odnosno EUS4WB.com je stranica na kojoj već imate dostupne sve materijale. Sada ćemo prijeći i na engleski zbog naših goši kako bi mogli, mogli voditi diskusiju u kojoj nam i ona može učestvovati. So, um, good morning everyone once again. I just briefly uh, presented um, that um, our info day today is um, organized with attention to present the EU scheme for young professionals in Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is actually a program uh, financed uh, by European Union and implemented by British Council. And its uh, specific objective is to build the professional capacity of civil servants and instill their commitment to EU-oriented civil service through their increased knowledge and understanding of EU accession. Also, uh, one of the objectives is to foster mutual connections and mobility between these agents of change through facilitating intra-BIH exchange program and Western Balkans mobility scheme. Uh, as you already know and you are aware, uh, today with us, um, Mr. Nicolas Bizel, the head of operations section uh, for justice and home affairs and public administration reform as a representative of the delegation of the European Union to Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, was uh, unfortunately unable to join us due to some really um, technical specific um, uh, problems but uh, I'm sure that uh, Larissa Halilo which is a director of British Council, Tamara Bajkusha, participant of the regional EU scheme for young professional in Western Balkans and of course Claire Lawrence as a deputy director as a representative of the College of Europe from Belgium, a partner institution which will organize the training are the uh, great uh, speakers and guests and panelists uh, to discuss uh, all the relevant details about this program. It is my really honor and pleasure to announce uh, Larisa Halilovic, who will uh, represent the program from the British Council perspective and maybe to say a few words more um, about this intra-BIH exchange, what it's all about. So Larisa, please take the floor. Good morning, everyone. Um, lovely to know that there are so many of you who have decided to join us this morning. And thank you, Claire, for joining us all the way from Belgium. Um, I would like to welcome you all to this live event and uh, to say greetings on behalf of the EU 
delegation to Bosnia and Herzegovina and also on behalf of the British Council um, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, this program, as you know from what you have already read, uh, is a program financed by the EU delegation and it's a program that's going to last for two years. It's targeting you, the civil servants, who are keen to develop your capacities uh, in the area of European integration, but also to strengthen your ability to network both locally and in the region, in Western Balkans, uh, so that you have uh, access to people and opportunities and knowledge related to those who also do very similar things as you do in your daily work. Now, you yourselves know best how challenging it is to actually operate in a rather complex administrative context that is Bosnia and Herzegovina. And this is exactly one of the reasons why the European Union has decided to uh, dedicate 1.5 million euros over two years uh, to give you the opportunity to develop your knowledge, uh, to have access to one of the most prestigious academic institutions in Europe, and Claire will tell you more about that later, but also to help you connect and to help you have the support that you actually need in order to do your job well. Now, what does the program actually entail? Um, we have already met with representatives of your institutions across Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, and I'm sure you have already seen and heard from people like Tamara, and I, I think I saw a message from one of our alumni members, um, Emir, who is in the chat. Um, I know that some of you have already experienced um, the benefit of attending this program in the past. Now, due to the new scenario um, and the pandemics which has changed the way we work, rather than seeing you face to face today, um, we are going to do this online, not only today, but also the actual training um, with College of Europe is going to happen in a blended uh, version containing both the online and self-paced learning, uh, but focusing exactly on your needs and specificities of the administration in Bosnia and Herzegovina so that you can operate better uh, on your way to EU accession. Um, what else do we have in store for you? So basically, in addition to uh, the online training, uh, which Claire is going to tell you more about. Um, we have also envisaged connecting and exchanging knowledge and practices with colleagues in Western Balkans. And in the past program, which we delivered across all six countries of Western Balkans, we have found that this is one of the most beneficial elements because you get the opportunity to see what is going on in the countries across Western Balkans, to meet the people who are doing similar things, and also to prepare activities based on knowledge and inputs of others who may have already gone through this process. And I remember some of our former participants were saying that this is one of the best elements of the program because you actually have people that you can call or contact and find out uh, a quick way of going around an obstacle that you uh, that you come across rather than having to deal with it yourself. Uh, the final element I would like to mention is uh, the Bosnia and Herzegovina, intra-Bosnia and Herzegovina exchange. And uh, having discussed with all the stakeholders and all the different governments in Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, the very process of EU accession, we have found that although there are so many of you who are involved in EU accession, very often um, you don't actually cooperate directly when you're working uh, on similar things. So what we would like to do is offer you the opportunity to meet your counterparts in different parts of the country, to do some sort of shadowing and joint activities and joint um, uh, papers and 
uh, to actually resolve problems together uh, in order to achieve better cohesion and again to achieve a stronger network of all of you who are dealing with similar opportunities and challenges related to EU accession. Um, these are the three main elements, but what you should also know is that um, the training is going to entail uh, use of English language uh, throughout. Uh, all the training is going to be done in English language and also uh, the papers, your assignments that you are going to work on. So there will be an element of English language testing uh, as part of the selection process. Um, and also, um, I know that some of you were really lucky to be able to travel uh, in the previous uh, program to um, Paris and to Bruges and to Brussels. Um, I'm pleased to say that the study tour component or the study visit component is still scheduled uh, for next year in May, should the situation, the health scenario allow us to do so. So we are working closely with the College of Europe uh, to draft an engaging and uh, exciting content, which is going to give you the opportunity to actually visit the institutions. Clearly, if for some reason um, the state of health has not changed by then, we will look at alternative options. But just so you know at this stage that there is a plan of actually uh, conducting the study visit uh, in, in May to 2021. Um, and also, as those of you who have uh, been part of this training before know, uh, we do have a very strong alumni network, uh, not only in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but also across Western Balkans. And being part of this network is something that I'm sure Tamara will tell you about uh, based on her experience. Um, we are planning a conference and bringing uh, participants together um, again, according to health measures um, and the state of play. Um, but basically, overall, this is such an exciting opportunity for all of you who fit, fit the requirements to be able to develop yourself, to obtain um, a qualification and a certificate from a reputable European um, institution and also to develop your network and to strengthen your knowledge, skills and connections when it comes to EU integration, because I know this is what you're already doing, uh, but it's a fantastic opportunity that the European Union is funding uh, for you to take that one step further. I will pause there for now and um, hand back over to Una uh, in case I've missed something. Thank you, Larissa. And uh, I'm pretty much now a little bit sorry because I'm not a public civil servant with one to seven years of experience with the EU accession. But uh, I'm definitely sure that uh, among our 33 attendees that we are having currently, uh, there are a uh, lot of them interested in their uh, in how to participate in the program. Um, just briefly to add that at the website, uh, so eu4wb6.com, uh, uh, there is an open call. Uh, so there is an information and the entire application package of materials. So after the session, I advise you to visit the website and just um, learn more about the entire process and rules uh, of procedure. So um, I think that uh, pretty much everyone are more interested uh, in sharing the experience, uh, first-hand experience. So uh, it is my pleasure to invite Tamara Baikusha uh, to, um, to address you and to share her personal uh, experience from the EU Scheme for Young Professionals in Western Balkans program. So Tamara, please um, take the floor. Yes, well, thank you, Una. Um, as announced, uh, I'm Tamara. I work for the Ministry of Foreign Trade and Economic Relations of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And it was my great pleasure and a privilege to be one of the participants of the regional program EU Scheme for Young Professionals in the Western Balkans. 
Today, I would like to share a bit of my experience with you. And let me start by saying that uh, participation in this program uh, definitely was one of the best uh, experiences in my professional career so far. Uh, in my opinion, uh, this program uh, was and is a well-designed combination of academic, professional and practical approach to education. Uh, which focuses on topics that are very important for our country and the region as a whole. And of course, those are EU integration and public administration reform. Uh, the trainings uh, we went through uh, were very uh, extensive. And when you take into account that all of this uh, was happening and was being organized by this great institution, uh, College of Europe, which is state of the art for education and these kind of topics, then that takes the whole experience uh, on even higher, even higher level. Um, we are all aware of the fact that the EU integration requires effective and efficient public administration, which is able to meet and follow the EU processes as they go. Uh, which is why program, this program is very important, even necessary, and will be important in the future. Our personal and professional capacities, and uh, we are now uh, much more prepared to face all the challenges that are in front of us uh, on this accession process. Uh, I left the program personally with new skills and new knowledge, which I use in my everyday work and uh, which, what is more important, uh, made me uh, go further, look beyond and uh, gave me courage to uh, deal with those more complex and complicated tasks and assignments. Uh, what was already mentioned by Larissa, and I really also have to uh, emphasize this other benefit of the program, is the social network that we create. This was especially developed during this regional uh, exchange part, but was happening all through the program. Um, we got a unique opportunity uh, to work with, learn with, and most importantly, to learn from our peers. Our colleagues that uh, have the similar background, do similar jobs, and have similar interests. And uh, let me assure you that uh, for us, the program didn't stop on its last day. Uh, we are still in touch. Uh, we are still in very close colleagues. And what is uh, important for all of us, we are also good friends. Yes, we do that through job, through the alumni association that Larissa mentioned. And we are just a phone call away uh, from each other for any kind of help, information, whatever we need. Uh, this is why I was very happy to find out that the program will continue specifically in our country because I believe that this will be a rare occasion uh, for other colleagues, young civil servants, to uh, sit together, to work together and to uh, give maybe even uh, more focus to the specific issues and the challenges that our country has and which are essential uh, for our EU path. So I would really like to use this opportunity to encourage all young civil servants in Bosnia and Herzegovina who meet the criteria to be brave and to apply. Uh, it really is once in a lifetime educational and professional opportunity. Uh, and uh, it will be uh, a great experience. Uh, I did it and it was excellent. If they allowed me, I would do it again, but uh, I'm sure they wouldn't allow me a second time around. <laughs> well, all jokes aside, uh, I would really like to use this opportunity uh, once again to thank British Council for um, making this effort for creating this kind of quality program together with the European Commission for allowing us to expand our knowledge and our skills uh, for um, you know giving us opportunity to meet all these people our peers uh, senior colleagues high representatives from the European Union um, uh, and of course thank you for inviting me to share my experience and story today with the <coughs> I sorry with the audience um, thank you for your attention and stay safe, please.
And if you have any questions, of course, I will be very happy to answer them. Thank you, Tamara, uh, for sharing this inspiring and encouraging words with uh, all of us. I believe that uh, everyone are now more encouraged to be part of this uh, program, especially because of uh, all of the uh, various type of benefits that you pointed out. And uh, I don't know, maybe maybe they would allow you for some senior. Maybe this is for the young professionals. Maybe in a few words, a few years is going to be like another version of the program. So uh, to to share the experience with the peers from the EU again. No, uh, but um, let's see how it works uh, when you are a part of that European Union and when, when you want to share the experience and knowledge and skills and practices with the colleagues from Western Balkans, in this case from the Bosnia and Herzegovina. It is really my pleasure to have uh, with us uh, today, this morning, Claire Lawrence, uh, Deputy Director uh, she's a representative of the College of Europe from Belgium, a partner institution which will organize the training. And uh, as uh, Larissa mentioned, due to all of these COVID-19 measures, unfortunately, it's going to be online. But maybe and hopefully uh, we will keep fingers crossed uh, to have all of the selected participants joining you, Claire, uh, in May. Uh, 21 um, really in a uh, in a Belgium. So um, please explain to all of the interested attendees and future participants probably um, how the training is designed and what College of Europe actually is uh, offering to all of them. Good morning once again and please take the floor. Thank you, Una. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so my name is Claire Lawrence, and uh, it's a great pleasure to be with you uh, this morning. Um, because you know, I was involved in two previous rounds uh, of this uh, program, and I still have wonderful memories of these two uh, past editions. And I'm really looking forward to this third uh, edition in only a few weeks now. So. Uh, um, let, let me tell you a bit more about how we structured the program. Um, uh, we know that you already have quite a lot of information on the website uh, of the program, but um, I'll, I'll give you a few um, key um, points. And if you have any questions, of course, uh, please feel free to, to ask me. So um, the training component is divided into five uh, pillars. Uh, we'll start, each pillar is of one week each. Uh, the first pillar will focus on understanding the EU dynamics. There's so much going on at EU level. Um, the von der Leyen Commission, uh, the, the recovery plan, the, so many new priorities, uh, a lot of things are, are happening. So the, the first week will be dedicated to uh, these dynamics. The second week will focus on uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina and the enlargement policy. Then uh, we'll move into uh, public administration reform and uh, very much uh, like managing change uh, for public efficiency. Um, to then like the, the, four, the fourth week will focus on the policy cycle from policy uh, formulation to policy evaluation. The fifth week is the one that we're hoping to host in Belgium, indeed, uh, fingers crossed, uh, and it will be a week dedicated to study visits, uh, meetings uh, and various uh, events. Maybe you're wondering, OK, this program was uh, initially done in, a, in, a, in Belgium uh, in a face to face format. So how will this happen online this time? Actually, uh, so what we we worked a lot uh, with the British Council to design um, this program and to make sure that although online uh, the impact and what you will get out of program uh, will be re will remain the same. Um, and so maybe what I can tell you now is that each week you'll have a series of different um, sessions uh, with different formats. Uh, some some uh, will be based on self-paced learning 
very concretely, it means that we will send you short videos on key concepts, on key uh, policy documents, etc. that you can uh, watch when, when you find it best suitable. When you have time, when you have a moment, uh, you, you watch these videos. Then we'll follow up with live online classes with uh, our key trainers. Uh, uh, and there, what we'll really focus on, you know, debating, uh, interactive exchanges, uh, analyzing together what uh, uh, these concepts or these new developments. In addition, uh, and because we know that you are the next generation of leaders uh, of uh, public service um, in uh, in Bosnia Herzegovina, we each week you have several workshops that will focus on skills. Um, communication skills, negotiation skills, and we know that in an EU uh, accession process, but also as EU mem future member states, you will have to negotiate uh, a lot with your peers, uh, member states, with EU institutions, etc. Um, change management skills, um, this is uh, crucial, um, and many other things. Next to that, we'll have a series of thematic sessions. And here, uh, I won't go into details, but just to let you know that this is very closely linked to the mobility program, uh, mobility uh, component of the program. Uh, just to tell you that, you know, the project has uh, different components, but they're all very much interlinked. Uh, and the idea here will be uh, to help you prepare for the mobility component um, uh, of the program. Uh, another type of sessions is uh, that you will uh, we organize so we already have foreseen uh, several several meet the officials uh, moments and this is where you'll be able to um, engage directly with uh, people from uh, EU institutions or other organizations and uh, you know challenge them discuss with them uh, try to understand their uh, their take on things. And uh, maybe last but not least, because, uh, OK, uh, as you probably have uh, already a general idea that this is an intense program, we haven't forgotten that uh, this program is also about uh, networking, getting to know each other. And so we have uh, foreseen a few social activities, uh, really looking forward to these ones, uh, a pub quiz night, uh, even a karaoke uh, night and uh, a few other surprises. Um, so overall, um, as I said, very intense program, definitely, uh, but also a very diverse one. And here, um, the last thing I would like to add um, before we take any questions is that um, maybe what's important uh, for those who, who may not know the College of Europe yet is that from the like we are an academic institution, we are postgraduate institutes, but from the very beginning, the college, when it was established in 1949, the idea was, OK, to study Europe, definitely. But importantly, maybe more important than studying Europe is preparing for action. So here we know that many of you who will uh, apply already have um, a master's uh, degree in European affairs or have already studied Europe to some extent. But uh, the focus will really be uh, the next step, uh, how to um, really live Europe and be part of it and work um, in, in this field. So um, very much uh, um, uh, skills oriented, hands on uh, approach for the whole training component. Thank you, Claire, so much. Uh, I like this intense and diverse, and uh, I like especially the part where you said that the, the institution since its, its establishment is being focused on preparing for action, and that's definitely what we need uh, in the Bosnia and Herzegovina and its uh, path towards the European Union, and that's definitely what all the participants of this program uh, will demonstrate afterwards. Uh, we have Oh, one question directly for you, and yes, uh, it's uh, been end of this official part with our with our announced uh, speakers and panelists. Um, so now all the audience will have a floor to uh, pose the question anonymously or uh, with their names. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's uh, important to discuss, uh, to ask whatever you want to know, and to uh, obtain uh, right and relevant information. 
information, and this is the great opportunity exactly for that specifically. So um, Yelena has been asking to, to, for Claire, and you see that on a chat. So could you tell us a bit more about the trainers you have selected for these trainings? Um, thank you, Yelena, for this question. Um, and um, precisely uh, coming back to what I was saying about you know, studying Europe and preparing for action. Um, at the college, we're, we're extremely privileged because we have um, a visiting faculty with very prominent scholars from all over Europe and beyond. So um, we tapped into that pool to have a few of these uh, scholars for, for, for this uh, upcoming program. But in addition to this, uh, we uh, some of our trainers uh, have much more of a, um, a profile that would be one of a, like coaches. Uh, because again, there's a there's a lot a lot of time will be dedicated to skills, so there will be a, a few coaches involved in, in the program, and um, another t uh, type of uh, uh, profile of our trainers uh, are practitioners, so um, peers, senior peers, who will uh, share with you how uh, they uh, work or how they were involved in enlargement processes, etc. And I think coming back to this idea. Of networking uh, here, what is important, you will definitely network among yourselves in the group with the other participants, and this is uh, a key dimension of, of this program and, and a long lasting um, uh, network that will be hopefully used on a daily basis, definitely. But you, the idea is also to network with these trainers, uh, scholars, uh, coaches. Uh, practitioners, you will also meet a number of officials and the idea is that you stay in touch also with uh, our, this whole team uh, of uh, uh, trainers who, who will be involved. So it's really it's really cool to stay in touch not only with the colleagues from alumni but also with the colleagues, uh, the trainer, the coaches, the ones that share their experience and knowledge. Um, question for Tamara, um, there's um, anonymously posed, what are the key improvements in your professional life due to the program? So maybe just to point out, um, although I remember you mentioned that you feel more confident, more brave to, to, uh, to face with the challenges uh, in everyday work, but please share some more specific de details. I'm sure that the audience is more interested in that. Uh, well, yes, uh, but uh, that is connected with what just uh, Claire, uh, Claire explained. Uh, we uh, had this opportunity to be coached for specific skills uh, by the people who are the best in the business. And uh, we, um, when you go to a class that is related to communication, negotiation, uh, we lack, I mean, uh, uh, we lack those kind of skills. We are good, but we could be better. And uh, the, the College of Europe and the whole organization really brought the best people uh, who, who gave us these really specific inputs how to be better, because that is definitely something that uh, we are going to do in, in the future ahead of us. We are going to sit uh, in one table with representatives of uh, European Commission and negotiate the terms of our integration. Uh, and also what Claire mentioned and I mentioned uh, is the uh, social aspect. I have this uh, great group of colleagues and friends now, both my peers and seniors that I can contact uh, if I have any kind of question, if I need any kind of help. If I want to organize something, I can contact one of my coaches and see if we can organize some kind of cooperation in that event or something like that. So yes, uh, it definitely, I mean, just feel different after the program. You're more uh, brave, you're more self-assured and you're not afraid of any kind of task. And uh, what is really also important is uh, we've seen firsthand how the EU works. Uh, we, uh, we became aware that the EU is this living organism that is changing, evolving and uh, we uh, got the skills that uh, will make us capable of following that uh, evolution. I hope that uh, in a way answers the anonymously posed question. 
Thank you, Tamara. Um, this is really important, I believe, so that sometimes the audience from Bosnia and Herzegovina are perceiving the EU as some uh, fixed, um, I don't know, item that is standing somewhere out there. But uh, thank you for sharing exactly that tool that is a living organism. It's evolving and changing and it's it has its own dynamics and it's really a challenge to understand how actually the EU works. And I'm definitely sure that uh, this program is the best way to learn that from the inside out. So um, the question about the exchange component of this this program uh, of the program this year is that probably for Larissa, I believe, maybe to add something. Um, yes, the just check. Oh, yeah. uh, so the exchange component usually means um, basically spending um, one week away from your office in uh, one of the countries of the Western Balkans and working with colleagues in the Western Balkans on uh, exchanging knowledge, ideas, materials, practices and uh, finding out more about how things are done in the neighboring countries. In addition to this, there is the local exchange program which will take uh, part for two weeks um, and that will entail again you know going away from your standard place of work and actually working from one of the other levels of the government that uh, you are not officially <laughs> a part of uh, and again you know exchanging how you do things uh, experiences finding out ways of how you can better do things together um, and also linking to people and practices across the country. Um, we are still planning on doing this face to face uh, and we are uh, very, very pleased to say that due to extensive work behind the scenes, um, all the local governments have agreed to take part and to be actively involved. So uh, there will be literally an office set up uh, for participants of this program uh, once they go to the assigned um, government and they will have a schedule of activities that they will um, be able to complete and take part in. But basically, once again, it's a very practical part. So it's not sitting and reading only. <laughs> there will be a lot of hands-on um, items to be done. And actually, I would like to take just a, a brief moment to say a massive thank you to people behind the scenes who have been working on this for many months now, um, including uh, the task manager from the EU delegation, Elma Prcic Bilic, who has been, you know, uh, championing this program the whole time, making sure that we are able to deliver despite all the obstacles. Also, we have colleagues from uh, the directorate from EU integration, Sena Lulo and Edina Avdic, and they have been, again, you know, uh, sitting with us in very complex steering committees and making sure that we are following the dynamics of the government and the needs of you, the civil servants, although you have been working in such challenging conditions. And there is also a whole team at the British Council of people who have been working really hard on uh, bringing the content together with your needs to make sure that we are able to deliver this. So I'm really pleased to say that despite all the changing uh, scenarios since the beginning of this year, we are here today and we are able to actually officially open uh, the call and invite you to um, submit your application to participate. I believe that that was a really um, extensive answer to the question. And also, uh, there is some uh, greetings from Birchko, uh, from Yasmina Salihovic, who is joining us uh, this morning. And um, she find this very useful in giving a clear picture of the entire program. She said, I'm an employee of Birchko District Government and I'm looking forward to applying. Also, the regional and in BIH exchange is something I find most interesting since it gives an opportunity to meet new people and create a useful network. So, Director for European Integration and BIH often organize useful events and seminars in which interpreters 
meet and I find it very useful in my everyday tasks, having an opportunity to call someone from other government asking for a piece of advice. Uh, she's holding a BA degree in English and she's wondering uh, should she just submit her di diploma as a proof of minimum English knowledge. And thank you for organizing first lectures online due to COVID-19 and making this happen no matter what. And there is an also another question, maybe Larissa can uh, take both. Uh, exchange programs in Western Balkans, but isn't this program only in BIH? So it's a good opportunity to explain this too. Thank you very much. Greetings to Brčko. We really enjoyed visiting uh, the local government just before the pandemics kicked in uh, to, uh, to develop the program with our stakeholders there. So th the first question regarding English language, we understand that basically all of you who are working in European integration have a certain uh, level of English language uh, to be able to do that in the first place. Um, however, in order to keep the procedures completely transparent and consistent, um, there will be a uh, test organized, I believe, towards the end of September, which will include listening and reading. I believe it might be done online, uh, but it, this will be provided for all the long list candidates. So practically, if you apply uh, for this program and if you meet the criteria, you will make it through to the long list. And then all the long listed candidates will have the opportunity to uh, attend uh, British Council's this test and this will be covered by the program. Uh, so there will be no cost imposed at your end. Um, the second question regarding the exchange program in Western Balkans and isn't this program only in Bosnia and Herzegovina? Um, the program targets civil servants from Bosnia and Herzegovina, but as you will have heard, um, the program takes place both virtually and physically in collaboration with uh, Bridge College of Europe. So there will be hopefully, fingers crossed, a physical uh, trip to um, Brussels. Also, uh, it envisages visits to Western Balkans countries. So one participant uh, is expected to attend one week of either shadowing or a, a scheduled program in one of the countries of the Western Balkans and in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So yes, the participants are from Bosnia and Herzegovina, but the program involves working in Bosnia and Herzegovina, in Western Balkans and in Europe. Thank you. So um, thank you, Larissa, for uh, all of these expl explanations. There is also one question regarding the seven years of experience, but before um, maybe one another uh, question arose, I will ask Claire maybe uh, to, to give us more details about if it happens in May or June next year. Uh, what is envisaged for the people who are uh, join you directly at the College of Europe in Belgium? So uh, what you have prepared for that program? And we really uh, want to see all of these participants there, not online. Thank you, um, Una. Um, so the study visit, um, as you probably have understood now, the four first weeks of the training program will be in November and uh, December. Uh, the, the visit is envisaged in May or June, uh, several reasons. First of all, we hope that by then uh, we'll be able to travel again and the health situation will improve. Second of all, uh, the weather in Bruges is definitely better, better in May and June than in uh, November and December. And Tamara can probably confirm this. Um, you were here with us uh, in winter. Um, so what will happen? Um, several things. Um, first of all, meeting the institutions. Um, you saw in the online program, we organized already a few uh, meetings uh, with uh, officials, but there in May, we'll be actually in the buildings of the institutions and meeting uh, a number of uh, officials. Officials working on uh, the enlargement process or thematic areas of interest. Uh, there will be very uh, tailored meetings. Uh, we're not talking about, you know, what is the European Commission? We're going to dive much more into uh, specific matters. 
and uh, the selection of uh, topics and uh, people that you will meet, we will do it once um, the selection process is done so that we can tailor as much as possible uh, these meetings to the profiles of the people in the group. So yourselves. Um, the second dimension is uh, further networking. Uh, but here the idea is uh, to continue networking, but with the Brussels bubble. You probably heard of this idea that there is a, a Brussels bubble. Uh, anyone working on on EU affairs with the EU, if you're a member, if you manage to get into that bubble, this will help you so much throughout your, your career. So here we will um, we'll, we'll have uh, further networking events. Um, uh, we'll have uh, a visi visi visibility sorry, a event where we'll invite uh, a number of uh, Brussels based uh, stakeholders. And uh, we're also hoping to uh, involve the, the mission of uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina to the EU so that you can see also how your uh, colleagues from the mission uh, work on a daily basis with, uh, with the EU. And last but not least, the idea also um, of this visit taking place a few months after uh, the first four weeks of the training program is to make sure that, um, you know, consolidate a bit the skills and the knowledge you had in November and December. Taking a step back and, uh, you know, uh, we, we will have some of the trainers of uh, uh, November, December, come back and uh, make sure that, you know, if there are any grey areas, if there are any things you would like to discuss again, uh, we can do so. And also the, these trainers will be there to help you further uh, with the mobility programme uh, com uh, component. Uh, so uh, working on, on your assignments and uh, if, if uh, there's any um, uh, help that these trainers uh, can, can, can give. So that's uh, and that's uh, it's. Uh, but uh, of course, if there's any any other questions, uh, I'm happy to uh, give more information. Thank you, Claire. Um, so we're approaching uh, the end of our session today, and uh, I would like to uh, ask uh, all of um, my speakers to prepare themselves for the last round and just to to share some inspiring and encouraging notes uh, with all the attendees in order to encourage them to apply for EU scheme for young professionals program that is uh, financed by the European Union, funded by the European Union and implemented by British Council. Um, also, uh, in this last round, we have like one more question standing. Uh, what about the experience uh, element? Uh, is the seven years uh, the limit or would you accept applicants if they have more years of adequate experience and that will be definitely a question for Larissa at the end but I will I will uh, like to to start this last round uh, with the Tamara um, because uh, you heard the, 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 the speakers, you see the questions and uh, I believe that uh, you can just have some final closing remarks. Yes, uh, well, um, let me say this. Uh, I believe that uh, European Commission, by supporting this kind of program, really showed the willingness to support our countries on their EU path. And uh, what uh, was very important for me and my colleagues was the fact that uh, our generation of civil servants were, rec were recognized as the ones that will uh, drive the necessary uh, and lead the necessary changes and reforms. And this is exactly how we were welcomed in all of the institutions that uh, we visited. We weren't only there to listen and learn, but uh, we got the unique opportunity to offer our own uh, opinions and standing points on the subjects that matter to us and we were actually able to start and lead the discussions. Uh, when you experience something like that, uh, there is a very, uh, very great feeling. Uh, that is why I believe that all young civil servants who meet the criteria should apply for this program to have that same experience because it's really uh, unique especially when you are coming from a non-member uh, country. Uh, I left the program hopeful uh, because I realized we have great people, great capacities, and uh, when we sit and focus, uh, we can really uh, do the necessary changes. So maybe that would be my uh, remark for, for, for the end. 
Thank you, Tamara. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. After all of this program and uh, all of these um, capacity building projects, uh, I believe that um, there are really a majority of young, uh, well-educated uh, and open-minded people who really can do the changes. And um, Larissa, uh, can you give us some closing remarks including the answer to the, our last question about this uh, age, uh, about the years of experience as a, as a, one of the requirements. Thank you. And actually what you just mentioned now, I think is really important for all of you who are open to learning. And I would like to say a massive thank you to our institutional partners, um, Agency for Civil Service uh, of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Republika Srpska and Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina and PARCO, because I'm not sure if you are aware, literally the whole country is giving you the opportunity to develop and investing time and money together with European Union for you to have the opportunity to learn, develop, grow and network. So when it comes to your experience, if you have more or uh, less than one year, but more than seven years of uh, experience in some other areas, do try because the criteria is there, but we have had situations where people apply um, that, that have done some other things in the past, which were not directly related to European integration. So if you feel that you fit the criteria in a broad manner, do apply. Uh, and our selection panel uh, will go through it very carefully and select the best candidates. Because remember, this is a merit-based process. We really want the best of the best, and we want you to show us that you want to learn, develop, and progress. Uh, so this would be my uh, final remark, do apply. Thank you. So it's like, be open to learning and do apply. That's actually uh, the the key the key message. Uh, at the end um, is our um, guest, special guest from Belgium, uh, Claire. And um, since you were being involved in previous projects and previous program, um, probably you have some experience, memories, something that you would like to share, something to encourage people, um, maybe to give some personal note to this institutional ones that uh, you shared with us for this uh, closing re closing remarks. Thank you, Una. Um, yes, definitely I have great memories of the two past editions and I think Tamara already uh, explained a bit what uh, uh, her experience and I, I can only confirm that um, for sure, like it's an intense program and very clearly uh, we did see that uh, like uh, uh, participants were a bit tired after the after the program, but so happy also. And there were so many lovely moments of, um, you know, um, like so intense debates, uh, a lot of fun. And really, you could see that um, the, um, we were one of our roles was to encourage networking, but actually we, we didn't do much. It, it was very, uh, very easy and it felt very um, just um, organic. Um, um, what I would say to anyone here um, and anyone interested is really don't miss this opportunity. It's really a great, great uh, way to get exposure. To, to, to also, you know, take a step back. You know, you all have very busy uh, jobs. Uh, it, it feels maybe overwhelming, but how will I manage to take uh, weeks off to, to focus uh, on this training? But do, do make this effort because you, I mean, Tamara said it's, life, it's a life changing experience. Um, and it's one where for once you can take the lead and invest in yourself. Uh, invest in your career, invest also in yeah, uh, in in your own capacities, in your skills, in your knowledge. This is something for yourselves and that's, you know, uh, once you acquire this, this is for you. Uh, so don't don't forget about yourself in the process. Don't be shy either. 
maybe you think, oh, okay, will, will I match the criteria? Will I be able to, uh, to, to do this? Um, go ahead, uh, uh, apply, and uh, and uh, really don't don't hesitate one second. And uh, so no, I'm I'm really really looking forward uh, to meeting. Um, meeting you all um, and uh, just to, to, to finish a big big thank you to uh, the, the EU for funding uh, this amazing program and to the British Council with whom we've been working uh, for the last uh, three years and it's been a great journey so far so I'm really looking forward to continuing uh, this and so uh, we're, we're waiting for you for the whole team uh, here at the college and uh, trainers and uh, so we're all excited to be seeing you in a few weeks. Thank you, Claire. Thank you very much. I really uh, hope that after this online part, uh, selected participants will be able to join you in May in person uh, in Belgium and College uh, of Europe. Um, we have uh, two more questions rela related to the age uh, limit and um, Larissa currently is watching the, the chat and I believe that if it's not written as a requirement, then probably it's not it's not uh, mandatory or something. And she's actually posting the posting the answer uh, in the chat in this live event Q and A. So um, uh, there is no limit specified. She said. So thank you very much, Larissa, for this uh, brief intervention. So um, dear all. We came to an end of this first info day uh, of the EU Scheme for Young Professional in Western Balkans program that is funded by European Union and implemented by British Council and intended uh, to engage to encourage and um, to train uh, young civil servants that are involved in the EU accession process in Bosnia and Herzegovina in order to equip them to be uh, really uh, skilled and prepared for all the challenges uh, of the EU integration process that are, um, are going to take place uh, for our country on its way to the EU. Um, today with us, we supposed to have, unfortunately did not have Mr. Nicolas Bizel, the head of operations section for justice and home affairs and public administration reform as a representative of the delegation of the European Union to Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, I would like to thank to Larissa Halilovic, director of British Council for sharing uh, great thoughts uh, with all of us today and encouraging you all to apply. Thank you to Tamara Baikusha, which uh, um, shared a great personal experience since she is a member of alumni of this program. She participated previously and really encouraged her peers and colleagues uh, to be part of this uh, program too. And of course, Claire Lawrence as a um, representative of the partnering partner institution, the College of Europe from Belgium that is being um, engaged to uh, to to organize um, the entire program and hopefully to be a host uh, uh, in May of next uh, year. Uh, next year. So uh, this uh, EU scheme uh, for young professionals in BIH um, is uh, going to organize another info day in seven days. So we will uh, keep you posted about uh, all of these uh, through our website and through emails since you've been registered for this one. And um, now uh, you can visit the website and find the and download and find the application package and to see all the documents you need and requirements. And of course, if you can have any questions, you can always contact um, the program. So um, application process is closing on 20th of September. So it's, uh, it's in next 16 days. So I believe that that is enough uh, of time for all of you to, to, to prepare everything you need and to apply. And I'm hoping that uh, many of you attendees right now with us are being are going to be a part of this uh, program. So um, the recording of this entire session is going to be soon on the website too. So you can watch it again, maybe just to to see that you haven't omitted some of the information shared. 
thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for uh, registering for this Info Day, and uh, I will see you in seven days for at the next Info Day session with some additional uh, in the additional topics and additional and other uh, panelists. And uh, I hope uh, that everyone will be encouraged to apply. And um, I wish luck to all of you who do who will. So thank you very much, and uh, see you in seven days.